My name's Josh Funder and I'm the author of Watson's Pier. The very origin of this book is when I was a young boy at Christmas and I sat at the feet of my great-grandfather and listened to his stories of Gallipoli. And what I heard that day was the untold story, an account of Gallipoli and its remarkable evacuation. That day I listened as hard as I could and remembered as much as I could. But his true struggle I could only really imagine. A decade later, an aunt gave me a manuscript that Watson had written when he was almost 90. I read it and part of the story continued to unfold for me. I've had that manuscript with me for over 25 years now and I couldn't get it out of my head. When I was travelling the world, I managed to visit Gallipoli, I managed to visit Egypt. And when I had struggles in work or in study, little adventures as well, they paled into insignificance relative to the experiences that Watson encountered. When I got home to Australia, I saw a video of Watson interviewed, telling his story when he was 93. And that sparked me to start writing his story, which is our story too. Watson began in Adelaide as a volunteer in the citizens' militia, and he was a sapper. When war broke out, he had two children, a wife and a good job. And yet he felt compelled to enlist and embark on a voyage to an unknown land to meet an unknown enemy. They trained at Broadmeadows, they sailed to Cairo, and then he was part of the early landing at Gallipoli. He was then able to build Watson's Pier, from which the book draws its name. He did that under untold duress. Shells exploded above. And at that stage, they didn't know whether the pier was to land more artillery to continue the campaign or to evacuate the soldiers. In the end, Watson was part of a small group of officers who collectively determined that instead of facing 10,000 losses as expected by the High Command, they would try and get everybody out. Through dogged persistence, they managed to do that. Watson was left to die. He made up a list of the men who would die with him. In the end, they all came through. I've used a combination of historical fact, veterans' war stories, and also narrative fiction to describe Watson's story, and with it, part of our national story. It's written as a tribute to prior generations, to those veterans who were there, but it's also written to current generations and future generations who don't have the privilege to know those men, like I had. I'm very proud to tell Watson's story. I hope you enjoy reading it.